God of War in five minutes, sort of. Everything you need to know about the story so far. Spoiler alert. Back when men fought with sticks and rocks, a Spartan general named Kratos had gotten pretty good at killing folks, but he wasn't perfect. During a battle with a barbarian tribe, Kratos gets hurt and is about to be killed by their king. Rather than losing his head over the situation, Kratos tells Ares, the god of war, that he'll offer up his soul in exchange for victory. Destroy my enemies, and my life is yours. Ares agrees, grants him strength, and permanently binds axe-like weapons called the Blades of Chaos to his arms to make him both deadly and awesome looking. Kratos then kills the barbarian king and really begins getting ahead in life. Ares then sends Kratos to tear down cities in search of massive loots for a number of years. Because Ares is a sadistic son of a bitch, and thanks to Kratos being in permanent rage mode, Ares tricks Kratos into slaughtering his own family. To add insult to ultra-violent injury, his family's ashes are then affixed to Kratos' skin, turning him white and earning him the nickname Ghost of Sparta. Years later, Ares sends Kratos to Attica to battle the Persians. After painting the town red, Kratos watches the sun fall from the sky and a black fog takes over the land. The god Eos tells him that Atlas has kidnapped Helios and sends him to the underworld. Kratos meets up with Persephone, who says that he can reunite with his daughter if he gives up all of his powers and weapons. He then returns Helios to the sky in the hopes that he can someday tan off the ashes glued to his body, but falls back to Earth unconscious, as returning gods to the sky is evidently a pretty tough workout. Being that gods are stingy, Athena removes all the loot that Kratos has collected and leaves him to ponder his life on some rocks. Years after that traumatic experience, Athena tells Kratos that her brother Ares has gotten a little overzealous with the whole pillaging and destruction thing and needs to be put down. She promises Kratos that if he can manage to kill Ares with Pandora's box, he'll be forgiven for killing his family. And if I am able to do this, to kill a god, then the visions, they will end? No word on the whole body covering ashes thing though. Kratos tracks down the titan Kronos, who lugs around Pandora's temple on his back because Zeus threw a hissy fit about Kronos trying to eat him when he was a baby. Kratos goes inside Pandora's crib, solves a bunch of puzzles that would make one-eyed Willy proud, and then snatches Pandora's box. Ares is no fool. So, little Spartan, you've recovered Zeus's precious box. But he is one hell of a column tosser and manages to lunge a pillar through Kratos' torso from halfway around the world, killing him and sending him to Hades. After some really annoying puzzles involving towers with spinning blades, Kratos climbs out of hell, retrieves Pandora's box, and uses it against Ares. Kratos loses his powers and weapons, but manages to grow to enormous size while Ares spawns a bunch of crab legs from his back. Your final lesson is at hand. Kratos eventually stabs Ares in the bread box and is happy for about two and a half seconds. It turns out that Athena sort of lied, and despite having killed a god, Kratos still has nightmares about killing his family. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. So he decides to try out his Olympic high dive routine off of a cliff of suborbital height. Athena saves him from death at the last second and names him the god of war. Now there is an empty throne in Olympus, and a new god of war is needed. Kratos is happy for what seems like three or four minutes this time, which is probably a new record for him. After lots and lots of killing, partying, and more killing, Athena realizes that Kratos is Teb biased towards the Spartan army and just keeps helping them win. My lord, Kratos! Another city is ready to fall! Soon all shall know the glory of Sparta! Zeus gets mad, brings a giant colossus statue to life, and makes it fight Kratos. Zeus then tricks Kratos into putting all his powers into a sword to kill the colossus, which Zeus then uses to stab Kratos to death. You will never be the ruler of Olympus. It also gives him a big, awesome scar. Kratos falls into a bunch of creepy arms, but climbs his way back up to Earth. Gaia, the mother of all titans, tells Kratos that he should head to the Sisters of Fate on the island of uh, Fate and change his destiny. Pegasus shows up by the gods. Kratos hops on, kills a bunch of griffins, stops to free Prometheus from being eaten alive every day of eternity, but burns him alive, and eventually gets to the island. After commandeering some giant horses, picking up the Golden Fleece, stealing Icarus' wings, and earning the ability to slow down time, Kratos makes his way to the Sisters of Fate and, of course, promptly kills them. He then pulls a Marty McFly and goes back in time to when Zeus originally stabbed him, steals the Blade of Olympus, and starts killing Zeus. Athena doesn't want Kratos taking down all of Olympus, so she tries to stop this but winds up being accidentally stabbed by Kratos. Before she dies, she tells Kratos that Zeus is his father. No. Shocker. Kratos then decides to further stray from common mythology by going back in time to before the Titans were originally banished by the gods, brings them back to his time, and convinces them to help him attack Olympus. 
The end. Zeus, your son has returned! I bring the destruction of Olympus!